Hello, this is Tom from Neversender, and I'm going to show you in this video the new things we've brought to you in uh, Silo 2024.2, 20, um, which is uh, now, as I'll show you in this pop-up that tells you what's new, we have uh, the big banner feature is native support for the ARM-based Mac processors like the M1, M2, M3, which brings enhancements across the board for all Mac users. Um, but we've also got great stuff for our Windows users and our Mac users, which is uh, we've improved all numerical entry fields. So um, I'll show you this. Uh, there's increment, decrement with arrow keys. There's modifiers to adjust that amount. Um, there's improved unit support. And then we've got bug fixes and other stuff. So uh, yeah, like I say, um, this is now, uh, I'm running this on a Mac uh, M2 MacBook Air. Um, and uh, so with the, the new processors, um, this runs natively. It also still runs natively on older Intel processors. So it's a, it's a universal binary. Um, but you'll see speed ups, uh, like I say, across the board, just as there's not that translation layer in between anymore. So uh, Mac users, Silo should be faster and smoother than ever. Um, and we hope that you'll enjoy that. Now let's, uh, let me show you the things that we've added to the numerical editor. Um, well, and it's all, it's all numerical fields. So even in like, you know, whatever um, options for like bevel or something, um, these numerical fields will have all these improvements also. So um, let me just show you some of the things. So I'm gonna select everything on this bridge um, and come over to the numerical editor. Uh, let's go to field like the size field. So um, this, all of the selected items here are nine feet tall. Um, and I've got this constrained. So if I change this, then it will change all of the sizes um, accordingly. So previously uh, you can scroll up and down in these fields. And um, first of all, um, you can still do that, but you can also press up and down to increment or decrement in these fields on your keyboard. And so that can be, uh, get you a lot more control over it. And another thing that you may notice if you've uh, done this with scrolling before is that um, this increment decrement, um, it respects units better. So if I'm in English units, when I press up on here, it will go up by inches. And again, this will work for all of these fields like position um, that goes up by inches there, uh, distance, um, etc. And so um, if you want to go up by more, you hold down shift and then that will go up by a foot instead of an inch. And again, this is only when we're in um, English units. And if I hold down command and hold press up and down, and this will go up by eighths of an inch. So very nice for precise architectural kinds of things. Um, and again, if I switch this to metric, so now it's got a sort of an uneven metric value here. Let's make this thing three meters tall, just so we can see. Uh, now if I press up, it'll go up by centimeters. Um, and that's without holding down any keys. And if I hold down shift, it will go up by uh, decimeters. It seemed like one whole meter was kind of too big of a unit to use for that. So um, this is holding down shift. It goes up by 10 centimeters at a time, holding nothing. It goes by one centimeter and holding command or control. It goes up by um, basically a, a hundredth of a centimeter. So, um, oh, that's a tenth, sorry, a tenth of a centimeter. Um, now, uh, like I say, we've got, so that's better unit support. We've got the up and down arrows with the modifiers. Let's go back to English units, put that at nine feet. Um, actually, let's stay in metric. Let me stay in metric and put this back at three meters tall. Um, another thing that we've added to these fields is like a, it's a right click menu in these numerical fields. So say like if I right click on this, this Y value field, um, for the position and hit reset, it will set that back to zero because that's what's defined as the default value for that field. And it's different in different fields. But you also notice 
um, in these fields, I'll come back to this, this height field, is that uh, there are these values that are sort of default multiples. And so if I do 2x, it will just double whatever is in that field. And similarly, half x or 5x, whatever. Um, so that just makes it a quick way to sort of jump between kind of orders of magnitude um, and just uh, handy, everyday, um, precise input improvements. Um, and uh, those are the main things I wanted to show you that we've got a few bug improvements, a few features. One of the things um, that a user requested um, and that, by the way, you can go to our new Discord uh, for Silo, uh, which should be um, a lovely place for you to suggest features to us. And we'll be on there and uh, giving feedback and seeing what, what you guys think about all these things. And you can also get betas there. Um, so this actually has been released as a beta on our Discord, and we'll leave a link in the text for you for that. But Anyway, um, one of our user requested features was um, in merge to have an option uh, to, instead of merging to the, the location of the last selected vertex, to uh, merge to the average location of two vertices. Um, so just a, a handy little thing. But we're looking for lots of more feature suggestions like unto that that are easy to put in for us and that we can quickly do. It's just like a, a workflow improvement that if you're a person who models every day, all day, um, these little things add up and we know that. So we'd love to hear what you have to say about it. And we hope that you'll enjoy this release of Silo. Thanks.